Gwinnett Medical Center is now entering Peachtree Corners. Conveniently located in the heart of this thriving community, our new center offers first-rate primary care and specialty services, including cardiology, gastroenterology, neurology, OBGYN, orthopedics, 3D mammography, and x-ray. Learn more about how GMC is making industry-leading healthcare more convenient than ever at GwinnettMedicalCenter.org slash PTC. You know, if you can make it through that, it there is a feeling of, of empowerment. Like, I, I can make it through these type of adversities, but um, you know, it doesn't always translate to real life, you know. Yeah. Um, it, I just have to make sure that I can, can get up and walk. You're listening to Peachtree Corners Life, a weekly online radio show sharing ideas, opinions, and news about the city of Peachtree Corners. Now, your host, Rico Figliolini. Hey, this is Rico Figliolini, host of Peachtree Corners Life. Um, we've been having a great time in the past few weeks doing different podcasts and stuff, including Capitalist Sage. But this fall, beginning with Peachtree Corners Life, we're going to be doing a lot more interviews of uh, different people, different uh, places they've been, um, different businesses, different candidates. But I wanted to lead off the beginning of the fall, and it's beautiful outside. It's like dropped 20 degrees from uh, last week almost, with a special guest, a man that's been a neighbor of mine for years, seeing their family grow, their kids, and we've had discussions, both political and social discussions, David Nixon, who uh, decided about six months ago, or longer actually, six months ago it started, to uh, do the Appalachian Trail. Maybe I brought the good weather with me. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. It was like 97 yeah. last week or the week before. So I know the Braves hated it. But, they're, they're <laughs> but um, you know, it's been, um, it's been interesting um, yeah. to see the evolution of, you know, this, this idea that you had to practice. And then I know you've been blogging about it also a bit. So, but for people that don't know David, tell us a little bit about yourself. And by the way, we did a profile in one of our issues of Peachtree Corners Magazine recently before you took off. Yeah, Joe Earl did a did a great job. I think he captured, you know, the the gist of the uh the hike and uh, before I left. So, uh, yeah. it was good. You know, I just got back uh September 26th um less than 2 weeks ago or something. So, wow. almost 6 months uh left April 3rd is when I started and um so long journey. Yeah. It's, um, well, tell us a little I, bit about yourself sure. before um, we get too I, far into uh, it. I uh, moved around when I was younger, but uh, settled uh, as a teenager in Conyers, Georgia, and uh, went to Georgia Tech, software engineer. Um, went co op to right around here in Tech Park um, during there and uh, worked for Hayes Microcomputers and, um, you know, just was involved um, heavily in the, the tech field. And then uh, they paved. Georgia 400, and all the tech stuff moved <laughs> to Alpharetta, <laughs> but uh, we continue to live here, and um, looks like it's all coming back, but I uh, worked for various software companies, and then um, at the end of 2017, I retired, so I was retired for, you know, o- over a year before I started to do this, um, hmm. so just, you know, always been active, uh, and... Um, well, you've been a runner too, I think. Yeah, you've done, running, you've done the, you know, all kinds of. I mean, you did the Atlanta, what's the uh, road race? Uh, you know, the Peace Street, many Peace years, yeah. uh, different things. Yeah, just al- always tried to stay moving. Um, you know, so while I was a software guy, I, you know, always was walking around, moving. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, uh, I don't know, the, the hike just started to, um, I don't know, it, it would, took a long time. I, I think uh, when you talk to people on the trail, they almost always have a Genesis story. Like they, oh, I, I was a kid. I was in the Smoky Mountains, and I saw a guy on the trail, and I always thought it might be interesting to me. So I think that that is an interesting part of the trail where most of the hikers on the trail can point to it where they, they initially heard about the trail. And like, you can walk from Georgia to Maine? Like, mm. that is so neat. Like, I would love to do that one day, but I think there's also a large segment of the population. I think that's crazy. Like, like, why would you do that? Why would you sleep in the woods? Why would you do that? But almost right. all of us on the trail had a story of when we first heard about the trail. Mm. And, uh, so. and, you, and you, 
I mean, you met a lot of people along the way. You were oh, telling yeah. me about, like, a scientist, a physicist. Or, oh, gosh, there's, uh, there's so many all sorts uh, of people. neat, interesting people. Um, you know, for me, I, I was never a hiker. There's a lot of people who are doing this trail who uh, kind of have it as a bucket list thing who, you know, weren't necessarily hikers. Plenty of people d- d- did things through scouts and things like that. Like, they, they did a lot of hiking. But there's a lot of people on the trail who just said, you know, I, I want to do this. And um, there's so much information now on the internet. A lot of uh, YouTubers um, that are showing people how to do it, how to use the gear, how to... You know, and, and if you research right. it, um, popular people like uh, Dixie is very popular, um, a girl, and she, she does a great job of kind of in a um, non-threatening way helping people to kind of understand how to go about doing this. Like people have a lot of blockers just, well, h- how do you how do you go to the bathroom in the woods? Like wh- right. how do you, you know, how do you do this? And so, right. you know, it... it it's just a lot more accessible. There, there's a whole whole world out there that you can um, you know, dive down into. And um, technically, we I had saved some pictures, and of, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be available to me through this feed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this as an art ga- as a gallery to the post. So visit livingimpeachrecorders.com, and you'll be able to see the pictures sure. that uh, that we saved two or three dozen pictures uh, of. Of Dave not only walking, but of the trail of the, of the. I mean, he would show a thousand pictures. Yeah. I mean, you have in your album, it's and I have a link back to uh, Dave's blog also that talks about the different days and stuff, what's going on and yeah. and such. Uh, but there's twelve albums that that you'll be able to go through and see uh, the adventure that Dave had. So tell me, you know, why? How did this? I mean, <laughs> I why? <laughs> yeah, um, you know. The trail is a trail of transition. Like th- that's one thing that comes true. That uh, there's um, kids in in school taking a gap year, or between graduate school, or people that have had a loss, had a had a partner um, die or divorce, or a lot of people like me retired. Re- you recently retired, a bucket list kind of thing. Want to do this? So um, mm. I, I would call it a trail of of transitions. Um, a lot of people out there trying to find themselves, trying to find the next thing. Um, mm-hmm. You're seeing a lot more people uh, that you didn't used to see, like middle age, who kind of are making a switch in their late 30s or, or 40. It used to be um, it was younger or older, but now you're seeing people who are just like, you know what, I, wa- I want to reset. I um, mm. So that's a big theme. Um, and people will ask, well, did the trail change you? And I think for um, a lot of retired people, not really. We're not really looking for that. That you know, we 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 just kind of want it as a a challenge. Um, that's one thing I talk about a lot. Is uh, you know, it it was a physical and mental challenge. Um, that there is beauty on the trail. Um, it it it's so diverse. Um, but if you go out there thinking it's just going to be a nice walk, it's it's going to be pretty. Um, <laughs> you you're not going to last very long. That it um. Right. A lot, a lot of it, most of it's uncomfortable. Mo- it, it is. It, it's a challenge. It's, um, but it, it's it's just so rich. It's you meet so many uh, neat people. You you're rained on one day. Um, you, you know, beautiful weather, and the next day, it, it it's just. I say that, you know, I, I just kind of get tired of the the, uh, the bedpan contemporary lifestyles. Like it <laughs> just it just feels like you know a lot of people are just like I just I want to change that or. I want to simplify things. You know, I, I'm tired of the chaotic pace of, of life. And I. Well, from the pictures I saw, it is a simple life to a degree. Yeah. I mean, it's not as barbaric as some people might think. You're right. on a trail, 2,200 miles. You have a tent. You bring in a 50 pound backpack with you. Did it's that not light? 50, no. Yeah. No, so <laughs> that, that's another thing is, um, you know, people just have no idea that uh, they think that you're out in the woods for six months, but you, you cross. Um, into towns every few days, four or five days. You, um, you know, I, I'm still eating good food and, mm-hmm. and drinking beer, and um, you know, th- th- again, that, that's another dichotomy of, of so many. There are people doing the trail on a budget, people who uh, can't leave the woods, who who camp every night, but there mm-hmm. are people, you know, who 
have more resources, you know, especially the older retired people who are trying to make the trail as comfortable as possible. So every three or four days, you know, if they want to, they can go have a really nice meal mm -hmm. or they can jump into a hotel every um, week. And, you know, it, it, it there's just a, a big difference. Um, that and you mentioned there's like, uh, and we were seeing pictures of like hostiles yeah, so that hostiles. are along the way. Along yeah, the so way. there's... Um, I mean, the best thing about the Appalachian Trail is it's it's the people, the people around the trail, the people that support the hikers, the families that have had a hiker do it or themselves. Like they, they come out to the road crossings and they'll do trail magic. They they have bring a cooler, they'll bring a grill, they'll or they'll just leave some drinks out. But there's just so many people that want to be a part of the trail and, and share, um, you know, they, they just want to hear your stories. They... Um, you know, they want to give you a ride and they don't expect any money. Um, and they just want to hear, you know, where you're from. There's people from all over the world. Um, so is that, you know, as you're talking about it, almost feeling like um, that's the America that we all want? Yeah. Not to get political or anything, sure. but I feel like that's the America we all want, right? People you can trust, people right. that are looking out for you a little bit. I think that um, I don't know a lot of the history of the AT, but I think that was the idea that they started with is just kind of a way for people to walk along and um, mm. kind of do those kind of things to have stops. And, um, and and that's what's so neat about it. And that you'll hear that from people across the world who say, well, you know, a guy from uh, Sparky from S Switzerland talked about how, yeah, I mean, I would camp in the Alps and things, but a lot of it's on mm. private land or it's very guarded. You mm. don't you just can't walk like you can on this trail, like from, you know, it's, and you go this through. year it's 2,192 miles. It, it changes every year. They, right. they add switchbacks, they do different things, but, um, so maybe water mudslides and stuff. Oh uh, yeah. Of, things, uh, things can happen. And, and yeah. then you walk another two or 300 miles on side trails or through town. So, I mean, it's, so you winding in and out, like you said, through town sometimes or roads? Well, or in and roads? out would be nice, but really you're up and down. So uh, they say that okay. the Appalachian Trail is like you know climbing Mount Everest, whatever, 15 or 20 times. Like the, the amount of elevation gain up and down, um, you call it gaps, call it, call it whatever. I mean, you, you're up on the ridge lines and then you go down to the road and it's usually a, a big descent. And then it's a huge climb out, and it it's just constantly up and down. And you know, I think that's one of the things that I was surprised about on the AT is that it's like uh, Bill Bryson's walk in the woods. Like you just you just want to walk, and <laughs> there's not a lot of time just to walk and enjoy it. Yet your the footing is treacherous. So there's a lot of slippery rocks and roots, and you're constantly paying attention to that. Um, did, did when you started out, I know you wanted to do it a certain way. Um, did you end up? What was your footwear like? What, how was? Uh, did you well, like, did you par down at some point? You know, oh, uh, sure. Out. Yeah, like you said, fifty pound packs. Now people are. Um, it, it's, it's so much different now. There's a lot of lightweight gear. I would say most people are in the high teens to uh, low twenties, and then you add water and food, and you might mm -hmm. be in the the mid twenties. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a lot more accessible now. I mean, the days of people doing it with the, the huge external backpacks and stuff, I mean, kudos to them because uh, mm -hmm. there's just a, there's a lot of information, a lot of stuff out there. But, you know, it's still hard. It, Did you do, like, um, sneakers? Oh, uh, no. So I wore my Chaco sandals. So I, I had Chaco sandals. Yeah, through? I've really? been wearing Chaco wow. sandals exclusively for a couple years before that. Yeah. And, I mean... There were other people that wore it, but it, it's certainly not the norm. The norm now are um, these trail runners, like these lightweight running shoes, ultra mm -hmm. running shoes that people are using. Um, you know, the days of the heavy boots right. are, are gone. I mean, people, you just don't see that. Um, and you saw different age groups, different... Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, retired, older, yeah. out of weight, out of weight, out of shape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but and they were doing sectionals. Do, what well, so, so that was, was section hikers. So, section that, so hikers. that was a thing I didn't really know about, that how pervasive section hiking is on the trail. That um, there's people from all over the country, the world, that uh, come back to the trail, that love this trail. Um, a great cost, um, time to, and, and they just have a couple weeks to hike every year, a week or 
Um, and they'll come, you know, spend a lot of money and come, mm -hmm. and they're not really in that great a shape, and they'll, you know, go and hike, and just the time they get in decent shape after a couple weeks, they have to go back home, and oh, wow. they'll come back, and then what they try to do is, is do, a lot of them do the whole trail over a lifetime. So I, I met people who, you know, had 20, 30 years in it, and they had, they're, they they wanted to do the whole trail eventually, so. That's a, that's like how I would do it. <laughs> I would not do the I whole thing because I'm so A lot out. of people, sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it, it's a thing. I mean. Uh, so what was your, like, the, your best moment on that? <laughs> um, I mean, it's hard to say. I, I, I don't do very good at those type of things, your, your favorite this or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it's just all part of the whole. It's, um. It's the freedom of, of just walking, of um, you know, only carrying minimal things, and so I talked to you a little bit before the show. It's like right. you know, I, life is complicated. There's all kinds of decisions, and I think um, the trail is fertile. A lot more introverted people are tr like trying to escape. Like they mm -hmm. go there to try to calm their mind. To um, and I, and I'm I'm definitely one of them. But you know, when I get out there. You can't just walk. Like I said, there's rocks and there's roots and there's gnats in your eyes and um, you know the weather is is too hot or or it's too cold or you know so there's no mm -hmm. easy answers and yet um, it's just so nice that you've pared it down to everything you can just carry on your back and mm -hmm. the solution each day is just to get up and walk and <laughs> you know. There's there's something about that's appealing, but you know your body doesn't always feel great. It feels beaten down. Um, but you kept going. Oh, I mean yeah. it, that that's what you do. Uh, I think they talk about um, every year four or five thousand something like that start the trail, and about twenty percent finish the whole way. Really. So now, how'd your you know obviously your family um, when you talk to them and your wife and your kids and you told them this is what you wanted to do how'd they feel about that uh it took a while um you that know it's a sacrifice oh life. definitely my you know. my wife is you know my here i said that uh you know she was um uh you know handled it for six months handled everything at home um and you know she came up and visited me gave me moral support so uh Hmm. It's um you know I I think I was like I said trying to find a way in a complicated world to you know I was watching shows about hiking but I never I wasn't sure I talked about her like when we eventually she's a high school teacher and she retires in a few more years like would we do stuff like this but she never hmm. fully embraced it and so um I th I think I finally last fall it it came together. I uh asked them last summer um my wife and my younger son you know, did maybe they could do the Georgia section of the Appalachian Trail. Mm -hmm. Um and they said well maybe and it got to be summer and they said yeah it's really hot. Like you know they just kind of backed out and I mm -hmm. said oh you know well I, I I still wasn't sure and then it just started to come together in the fall and I said you know the older son is off at college. He's got his own apartment. The mm -hmm. younger son spends most of his time in his bedroom trying to figure himself out. I was like, you know, what do you think? You know, and she took her a little bit, but sure. she eventually got on board mm -hmm. and um, she got geared up. And uh, you know, I couldn't have done it without her support. And uh, my older son actually got into backpacking. He came up and visited me in Maine, and um, my wife came up uh, twice. She came up for two and a half weeks in Pennsylvania. I remember that. And yes, then uh, took, came back for a month and then came up in Vermont and New Hampshire. And, um, and you did the flip-flop is what they call it, right? They call that a flip-flop. So uh, most people start Springer Mountain, Georgia, and uh, it's really crowded. It's um, Really? Yeah, it, it's really crowded. Everybody's starting. And um, one of the main bottleneck points is the Smoky Mountains. So the Smoky Mountains National Park has all these kind of restrictions. They don't want you camping on your own. And so it makes mm -hmm. it really hard. You have to register as a, a through hiker. You pay a fee, mm -hmm. but you're kind of treated as the lowest. The, the, the idea is I think the, 
they think you're prepared, so they give preference to the section hikers and, and mm. people who can reserve the shelters that are in the park. And you can only camp in these shelters because they don't want it overused. Right. So the through hikers, you know, especially in the cold, it's in March, um, it gets dark early. It, it, they'll be, you know, in their sleeping bags, all warm and cozy and just ready to go to sleep at 5 o'clock. And then, you know, a bunch of scouts will come in at uh, – nine o'clock at night and say, well, we reserve this shelter oh, and wow. you have to get out and set up your tent or so it, it creates a lot of uh, problems for the through hikers and they complain about that. Um, same thing up in the white mounts of New Hampshire, just where there's a lot of restrictions where we're used to just kind of being able to, to walk and set up our tent wherever if we need to. And so life does invade a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I doing. wanted to avoid yeah. All that I wanted to avoid the, the coldest of the the um, the weather, and so I actually started in Damascus, Virginia, which is uh, 470 miles north on the trail. Um, my wife drove me up on the spring break, um, April 3rd, mm-hmm. and uh, I started from there. So um, it it took that, a couple yeah it took a couple weeks for the the Georgia people who started earlier to mm-hmm. kind of reach me, okay. and uh, it was lonely. I. You know, I, I was in a cold, driving rain uh, up near Grayson Highlands, Mount Rogers, and um, you know, I was happy to use my rain gear. I had, you know, I had my stuff, and my uh-huh. system was kind of working. But you know, it was lonely. I remember emailing her and talking to her and saying, you know, maybe fake hiking was, uh, you know, practice hiking. hiking was was more fun than real hiking. And, and mm. I think we everybody who gets on the trail, unless you have a lot of experience. It, you're kind of surprised at how hard it is and, and lonely it is, and uh, yeah, it's something you have to work through. Yeah, it's funny. It's um, the us. Um, my wife talked about. We talked about this a little bit about this philosophy of um, uh, ascension. That uh, you have your parents. You count on your parents. And eventually, your parents are gone, and you're the ones left at the top now. And everyone's below you, and you have to take care of your kids and stuff. There's no one. Can you help me? <laughs> There's no one yeah. above you anymore. And being on a trail like that almost feels like, to me anyway, would feel that way. You're out there by yourself. You have really have to depend on yourself. Right. I mean, you have to know that wherever you are there, that this is a good place to be. Bears, mountain lions, whatever that might show up. or And, and that sounds like that didn't happen right. during that trail yeah. time, which is cool, you know, because you would think maybe somewhere along the path of six months of doing that, you might have crossed something. But um, I got to feel that that either empowers you or makes you feel smaller or or maybe both. I don't right. know. It, it's that, all. Uh, it, it's it's everything that, um, you know, it, if you can make it through that, it, it there is a feeling of, of empowerment. Like, I, I can make it through these type of adversities. But, um, you know, it doesn't always translate to real life, you know. Yeah. Um, it, I just have to make sure that I can can get up and walk. But, you know, the subset of problems and, and things is, is pretty small. You know, right. I just have to do this thing. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's something. It's definitely it kind of challenging yourself. And I think you have to have that mentality to really want to do it. And people will ask, well, why, if it's not fun, why would you do mm-hmm. it? But there's... It's it, an adventure. It's both. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. I mean, some people will come back and say... They had a great time, but it's surprising how many people I met who said, you know, well, I said I was going to do this. I told everybody I was going to do this. Ah. Or I'm, I mean, there are right. maybe people who, I mean, they don't quit in their real life. Like they, by God, you know, I'm, I'm going to finish this. And uh, for a lot of people that do this, I mean, including me, that you kind of turn your whole world upside down. It, you the people around you, your family, you, you, it's such an investment. I mean, a I lot think. of times beforehand, you're planning it for a long time. It's it's expensive. Um, they used to say it, it, it was $1,000 a month. So if you're on the trail for five or six months, the trail can cost you. You know, I, Now they kind of are saying that that might be double that uh, wow. to, to hike the trail um, because you're staying at places staying places you're buying food you um, provisions you kind of underestimate so 
I talked about the different type of people on the trail. So there's a lot of us who very con- live very comfortable lives. And I remember having a discussion with a couple other retired people. We're in a cold shelter up in you know northern Virginia, and, and, it, and it is just cold, and it is a rain, maybe even snowed. And uh, we're sitting there, and I was like, why are we doing this? Like, <laughs> like we're all leaving com- leaving comfortable lives. Mm. And um, so so there's that dichotomy where – a lot of us are so comfortable that we can, we have the money, the resources to make the trail more comfortable. We can, if we're too cold, like, oh, wow, we're going to get to a road crossing tomorrow. We'll just call a shuttle, call an Uber. Uh, we'll get to I a hotel. We'll dry out. Right. We'll have a nice meal. Mm-hmm. But plenty of other people don't have much money. Like, they stay in the woods the whole mm-hmm. time. So there mm-hmm. was always that. But I guess the interesting thing is the the retired people, the the people with resources, while they can do that, Right. make it comfortable what's always right there is is that that you know that person sitting on your shoulder going why are you out here like what why don't you just go mm. back home why don't you go back to your comfortable life what like why are you doing this and it's, it, other people don't have things to return yeah. to they their life is not sorted out so they're on the trail for a reason they don't really want to get off but right. so you know that. i noticed that uh you know, through looking through the pictures, I mean, beautiful, some of them beautiful pictures of just a, an expanse of America, um, fog rolling through the hills, narrow uh, pathways, bridges, creeks, rivers, p- places you've been, people you've met, the scientists, the, um, the guy with his dog in his backpack. You know, I can see that's almost stereotypical of what you would right. think, guy with his dog in his backpack on right. the road. Um, it's all but, of that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, the trip is just so rich, and but it, it's it's just so hard. It's hard to explain. Like you you see the the fog rolling in and, and everything, and, and it's certainly there. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times the trail is just up on these ridge lines, and there's not a lot of views. Maybe early in the year before the the leaves come in, they mm-hmm. call it the green tunnel. <laughs> we just get stuck in the green, and you it's a it's really a mental oh, wow. struggle to okay. um, you know to walk over slippery rocks and roots and not really be rewarded with any views. And you're just going up, 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 and then down, 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 down. And um, do you want to keep going? Um, but the people are, are are really neat. Like the scientists that you talked about, um, home place in, in Virginia, uh, right out Roan- outside Roanoke, I, I was sitting on a got there early and I was kind of waiting for the place to open. It's one of those places, mm-hmm. a home place, a home cooking place is only open Thursday through Sunday. And he sat down and I said, he kind of looks like a hiker. And he sat down and started to talk to me. And it uh, turns out he's, you know, from New Mexico and a uh, mm-hmm. nuclear scientist. And he goes on, and he says, well, you want to sit with me? And he tells me all these stories about how they tried to um, work with the uh, Soviet Union scientists when it when the Soviet Union broke up to try to get them to not go develop, you know, nuclear arsenal for North Korea and all the kind of things and all the neat sure. things that they developed out of that. But I met so many um, huh. just intelligent, um, really accomplished people out there who, you know, but a well, lot of times you don't get into those discussions either. Like you don't talk a lot. You know, some people do want to talk about it. other mm-hmm. people. You don't want to talk about your, you know, money or career or right. things like that. Did, did, um, just because, did politics come up at all along the trail? Not really. Okay. No. So the outside world of what was going on with, you know, what goes on with Trump or right. all these other things, really, that's not what... You know, the cell phone coverage is possible. Um, mm-hmm. And people, some people did do it. I made a real attempt to, to really not know anything. In fact, I didn't know anything about the trail for a long time, like I knew until Notre Dame burned, I owned her, I overheard somebody saying something about that. Right, that's right. There was a killing on the trail that's this right. year. Yes. I heard about that. There was talk up and down the trail, but in general, I, I didn't want to know anything. You know, if I would mm-hmm. go into the hotel lobby or, or the morning breakfast, they would, you know, have one of the, you know, CNN or Fox or something on it. I, I sure. couldn't stand that. Like I, I don't want to hear. I didn't want to hear anything. I, I didn't try to look up any information i want it to be totally you know, totally, totally out there yeah no i don't i don't blame you because i mean it's just you're 
you know you're going to be, well, originally you thought, did you think it was going to take you five months or six months? <laughs> well, you hear like four to six months, and usually it's because the weather demands that. So people try to start a little later in Georgia, but, you know, people are starting earlier and earlier just trying to miss the bubble. But um, you have to get to Maine before the weather comes in, usually in September or so. Right. They, they they close Mount Katahdin, uh, Baxter State Park. They they kind of close it. Which is the so top. That's the, the peak right. of where you stop. That's, a, that's the top right. in Maine. And so right. you have that. And I, I was like, well, you know, I, I'm not really that experienced, but I'm in decent shape. Like maybe it'll take mm-hmm. me four and a half, five months. But, you know, it was pretty close to six. And uh, it's so, – so to make it in six months, you have to average 12 miles – a day that that's um i remember telling my wife the recognition like a month before i said you know i i go for runs and things like but i i take days <sighs> off here and there like right. how do you how do you do that every single day like get up and do something for 12 miles so it it's different because you you might hike i i think 20 is probably the the number that everybody talks about so that while mm-hmm. they're trying to develop their trail legs it's like they're trying to get to 20 miles um and they might go a little bit more a little bit less but i think most people are comfortable in the high teens kind of thing but so you'll you'll do a few of those Mm -hmm. but then you might take a short day into town and then maybe a day off um every week so the average you know will be around 12 to make it but but and you're walking i mean it's not like i mean i could walk my my subdivision and do three miles in an hour let's say Twelve. That would you would say, well, twelve uh, twelve miles, and that would be four hours. But right. it's really not because you're walking trails. You're the at, right. going over the average is about two to two and a half miles an hour is what you do. So people, yeah. you're waking up usually with yeah. the sunlight. So you're on definitely more of a natural time frame, kind of like mm-hmm. a farmer used to be. Like you, you're waking up and you're hiking ten, uh, twelve hours a day, depending on the light that's a and long things and that's a long day so you're hiking 20 miles um you know, the younger kids are, are blowing by you and, and they're hiking at two and a half to three miles and and people always say oh you're going too fast you're going too fast but i mean what else do you have to do out there so they're just walking say, you just <laughs> i think i would go nuts uh, i i'd be listening to podcasts the whole time. That's I mean, another thing. So people start out, and, and you'll see section hikers or weekenders, and, mm-hmm. and they'll see uh, people, other people have the headphones in, and they, they'll kind of be put off, like, oh, you're in nature, you shouldn't be. And I think all of us start out like that. Right. But it doesn't take long before you're looking for books on tape, you're looking for, you know, right. things. And so it, it was pretty common. Did, that, did that happen to you? Or? I really tried not to. I, I want my mind to kind of wander. I, I want it to be free. And um, I, I didn't. There's okay. there's also just work and anxiety and things in trying to curate, you know, trying to come up yeah. with your list of things like that's work, you know, so I didn't want anything with so that. No so no playlist that you no want No playlist, buy. nothing, just... Uh, I just like to walk and let my mind wander. And um. when I know that when you were preparing your pack and stuff, you know, you sort of had an idea of what what you wanted to bring. Are there like items that you would not do without on a trail like that? Uh, For those that may think of doing a section, or items or, that you wouldn't do without. Um, right, items that you that you know that you would really. Well, need. I mean, just clothes. Like the biggest thing is uh, hypothermia. Um, mm. Just making sure that you stay warm. So it's funny, like the Appalachian Trail, it's basically a rainforest kind of thing. Like, So you're going to get wet. Everybody knows you're going to get rained on, but there's no answer for rain. Like mm. despite all the high-tech gear and everything, your feet get blisters, your hands turn pruned. You So you'll see on the trail, everybody hates rain. Like if you see a storm is coming, People will try to get into town. They'll try to get into hostels. That like, mm-hmm. And they know on clear days they can hike 25, 20, 30 miles. So they, they, everybody hates rain. Now you, you get stuck in it. And sometimes you're, you're walking and the rain starts. And that's one thing. But when you wake up in the dark and just hear the rain coming and you know it rained the day before. So your, your clothes don't dry out. Like if it's humid. Right. And you don't carry a lot of clothes. Like you, you carry your, your hiking clothes and maybe 
another dry shirt for like to sets. sleep in. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's pretty common. Mm-hmm. Um, so y- you might hang up your, your wet shirt you, hi- you hiked in or got rained in, and you wake up the next mm-hmm. morning and it's still raining. It, it didn't dry. Like, you have no option. You, you put on your wet stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. And you go out in the rain and you just start walking. And it, it could be perspiration, it could be humidity. So a lot of times it doesn't matter. So you'll put on a rain jacket but you sweat just as much as if you had been rain. So you, sure. there's no hiding from wet on the trail. It, wow. You have to be comfortable with being wet. But what you don't want to be is, is hypothermic. So you'll put on a layer, and you may be wet underneath, but you, but you need to be warm, and right. you need to know. So even though it's wet, layering is, is the way to go. Layering, and you need to know when you've got to get out of the rain, when you got to erect your, your tent or get into a shelter or get to town like you you just can't, and, and it can be at, you know, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, mm-hmm. and you can get hypothermia. So that was probably my main concern, and I think somebody asked me a question the other day, what was my scariest moment? And it was, yeah. it's, not, it's not animals. It's, you know, bears usually, if you see them, they're running. It's being exposed on ridge lines when you never know the weather's coming or going. Mm-hmm. Um, I never got stuck in a lightning storm, but you're always afraid because you have, like up in New Hampshire, you have a 10 or 12 mile stretch. I mean, that's going to take you hours to get across on an exposed ridge line, And you can see clouds billowing all over the place. Right. You don't know, you know, what's going to happen. And You know, it's almost, almost feels like, I mean, you know, if you go back a hundred years, a hundred, well, more than that, probably 130 years. I mean, um, go back that amount of time to people that would be walking that Appalachian Trail or even 200 years. I mean, essentially you're out, and if you're now listening to an audible book, you're essentially time traveled back. Yeah. To uh, I mean, you have your clothes, you might have your food, but technology wise, as as basic as you could get, right? Right. And you're out there, and, and it almost seems to me this is how this is how America was. This is how they traveled. This is why you know you went back home if you were in the capital because <laughs> you know it took you days or weeks to get back home or something. Yeah. I mean, had. Did that feel like that way sometimes, like almost oh, time yeah. traveling I mean, back? D- I mean. d- where can you get that? And you hear people that are coming from all over the world, like, where can you get a place where you can just kind of be walking? And it, it's not all in nature. A lot mm-hmm. of times, I mean, the, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy is, is bought up land and, and, and trying to get a corridor where you feel like it's a wilderness experience, but mm-hmm. you hear cars and, and things at different times. Okay. Um, so. But it, it's trying to be that wilderness experience, and, and for a lot of the time, it is, you know. Was it surprisingly surprisingly less of an experience that way because of the cars? <sighs> no, and the... I watched enough to know that okay. it was like that. But um, it's, uh, I mean, it, you're, you're definitely lonely a lot. You walk a lot alone. Um, most people are always surprised, like, are you going alone? Most people start alone. Like, how... Where yeah. else are you going to find somebody else that's going to take off for six months? Or like, it's hard to find another right. sure. person to do that. So most people show up to hike the trail uh, alone, and then you meet other people, and, and you get into what's called a tramley, a trail family. And so uh-huh. it's usually around people who hike similar miles to you. It's real hard to change your pace to to slow down or go faster. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, it, you know, I, I didn't ever get really with. Uh, a trail family, but I, you know, I met a lot of people here and there, and you're always kind of hiking around them. And to me, most people come back saying that it, it's the it's the people that are the best part of the trail. It, mm. It's the people that you meet on the trail, the people around the trail, um, having a shared experience of, uh, you know, for almost, sure. Almost. And I mean, and I'm, I would imagine that you'd stop, they'd pass. You pass them again, maybe even. Yeah, you know, you hear people I mean, all the time. Oh wow, you know, up in uh, Vermont, New York, I, I haven't seen them since the Smokies, or I haven't. And um, really? you know, another neat thing is just the different people that hook up together. Like you know, I I would be further up north, and I would see um, a couple, th- several different groups of people. Like a there was a lady. Um, and she was a, a Missouri State Trooper, an old retired lady with a like twenty year old kind of Marine guy from the Midwest, mm-hmm. and another like just all these diverse who they set up early on, like they met each other on the third day, and they hiked the whole. They stayed together, wow. and I don't really understand that because 
people get hurt. You have kind of different, you know, philosophies mm -hmm. or you family comes into town and you meet them, but they always made an effort maybe to get back together. Mm. Now, that wasn't everybody, but, um, there were some people. Oh yeah. They, they, they well, they, there's comfort in numbers sometimes, right? Uh, no, there's uh, a human tendency to kind of to to uh, group together uh, and uh, tribal instinct yeah. almost. I mean, just all kinds of neat serendipitous things that you see happen. Um, there was uh, two girls um, who never knew each other. One girl, she was going to Carnegie Mellon, and uh, another girl who was due to start there. They didn't know each other beforehand, but met on. You know, pretty early on, and they ended up hiking most of the trail together, mm. and are going to be at college this fall together, right. but didn't know each other before they started. That sounds almost like a beautiful friendship. Yeah, right? I mean, I mean, I had a really neat experience, or um, like I talked about, and that third day, really cold rain, and up Mount Rogers and Grayson Highlands, and uh, I got to the shelter there, and there was a family in there. Uh, the the mother was in the father, they had the dog, they had three kids. And we got to talking, and um, the the guy said that the teenage son and the younger son were going to be up in Maine later that summer. They had family in Maine, and they were going to hike in the 100-mile wilderness. And I got up in the 100-mile wilderness, you know, early in the morning, one morning on the top of White Cap Mountain, and there's, you know, two kids up there, the only other people. And I looked at them, and I was like, wait a minute, are you? <laughs> and they're like, you know, uh, I think it was Ned and Abe, or, um, they're like, yeah, Ned thought he saw you at the campsite last night. He thought that was you. And so oh, I ended up seeing them. They gave me a ride into town in um, Millinocket at, at the end. And, um, you know, just all kinds of really neat things that happened. Yeah, all friendly people. I don't think it sounds like to me you didn't come across anyone right. that you wouldn't, uh, that you would avoid. Right. But it, it really is friendly. A lot of people ask, did you take a weapon or, uh, I mean, it, it's it's really safe. People are looking out for each other. Um, it, it you're not it, you don't have to go six months. You're crossing into towns. You can make it as uh, town like as you want, as comfortable as you want, or yeah. as you know. So, sounds like it. And and even when you went into town, let's say to get a hot meal or something. Yeah. What was the hot meal that you really looked forward to? Oh, uh, I mean, I always want beer and coffee. Um, Okay. Beer, coffee, a lot of uh, pizza, uh, burgers. I mean, anything you can eat. I mean, it is such a struggle. I I lost probably thirty pounds, and and I was eating a lot. I mean, I I was, I mean, I, I ate well, um, but it, it is such a struggle to keep weight on. It's such a struggle to get good rest. So, right. while although you're tired, your it's your body is your legs are jumping, mm -hmm. and it it just. So you never made food on the trail. Like, did you ever cook on the trail? Uh, so that's the thing. I would call it stoveless. So a lot of people bring these little um, pocket rocket stoves um, that have little gas canisters, and they cook their own meals. Maybe they've dehydrated them at home, but there's a lot of uh, prepared meals, um, mountain house meals that are uh, you buy. They're almost like $10 a piece, uh -huh. but people buy them in town. Um, a lot of just packaged food like nor mm. macaroni sides um but if i was really in the woods for six months i probably would have had stove but i knew every three or four days i was going right. to get hot food so i didn't carry a stove i mainly ate at a ziploc bag and i would you know have oat, like a mixture of like oatmeal coffee maybe breakfast drinks mm. some dry powdered milk and i would eat that in the morning a lot of bars cliff bars kind bars a lot of bars did you have snacks. like your own coffee pot that you oh, like no, actually no 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 no, no. like <laughs> it's instant coffee just pouring oh, water okay, in there okay. and uh so cold coffee I yeah guess. I, I love uh pepperoni or sausage and a block of cheese you know that will okay. keep for three or four days and so right, right um people do you know tortillas and uh peanut butter and honey um and then at night, I mean I, I like instant mashed potatoes uh they they immediately are, are soft and with tuna or spam um throw in some ramen they, they take a little bit longer to, to soften um you know so that that was my go-to mm -hmm. is uh <laughs> you know and i can't it eat that it became a day. comfort almost probably yeah. right and, and <laughs> you, eat any, to... you eat anything and everything you you, you when you get to town I, I like salads i always wanted a salad blue cheese dressing and uh mm -hmm. you know then i'd have the large pizza and you know 
my wife would always say, you know, did you really spend 50 or $60 at dinner? I was like, well, I had the large pizza, I had the salad, I had, you know, three beers and I had, you know, dessert. So you just, you're just eating so much. I would um, think that, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about getting weight. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're just building carbs. You just eat. I mean, you're looking for calories. You know, like I right. would go and resupply, and you know, I was like, "Wow, look at this Krispy Kreme apple pie. That's 450 calories in this little thing." So, you know, you you want calories. And you didn't have to worry about like you know, like I know I would have to worry about like medication or like uh, right. I didn't have. You that. didn't have Some any like did. high cholesterol, yeah. high blood pressure, or anything. Certainly like that. a factor. People yeah. carry medication. That I mean, that's another yeah. complicated dietary restrictions. Right. Gluten free, um, little yeah, salt and sugar, things, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And and as far as I mean, obviously a cross range of ages you you met along the trail too. Right. Um, and, and Helen, your wife came up several times. Right. So she uh, came up. Yeah, like for two and a half weeks. Uh, when right around Memorial Day, she got finished for the summer. Came up to Pennsylvania, and mm-hmm. um, my son Derek came up also, and uh, she did what, what's called slack packing. So. She would, uh, you know, meet me at the road crossings. We would set up, kind of say, you know, I'm going to hike 15 or whatever miles today. Mm -hmm. And she drops me in the morning at this road crossing and then picks me up, you know, whatever hours later. And we go back to a hotel. So we would kind of like, I mean, go to a hotel, go to a nice, I mean, you're up there in New England. We're doing nice country inns and and things in um, She's meeting all the people that I, I talk about. I was giving like a, a daily email to my family about what I did. And so she's mm-hmm. meeting all the people we talked about. She's doing trail magic, bringing them Gatorades, beating them at road oh, crossings. Nice. And um, she got involved in it. And it just was so much fun. Um, it was nice to have meals every night for that. Nice to sleep in a bed. Nice to be with her. So it just, it was really nice. She she went back for a month and that about killed me through New York because <laughs> you're still so far away. Right. And I was so used, you know, I missed her so much. She went home for a month and then came back um, through Vermont and some of New Hampshire. And um, just, we really had the best time. And I'm so glad that, you know, she was able to share it uh, with me. It made it so much cool. better. I, I wanted to see if we could get her on, but it, was, it wasn't possible to, <laughs> like, yeah. to pull her on to the show. But uh, I'm wondering if she ever shared, uh, you know, the experiences like that you were on the trip with her kids in school. I was just... Curious no, if that ever she came said, no. She's, I think, tries to keep it more. She's definitely more private than me. She, right, um, right. But uh, yeah, so so the slack packing, I don't think I explained okay. that. So that's you know where I, I'm not going to be sleeping in the woods or whatever. So mm-hmm. I just have a little day pack, and I might carry my, my oh, water okay. a, a water filter to filter. Because you water. put your other bag into the car and stuff, and yeah, it just stays at the, just, the okay. motel or, or whatever. Motel. And I just right. so that I mean, the, and there's all kinds of yeah do's and don'ts and gatekeepers about what is a real hike how many nights should you sleep you should never be in a hotel oh who's you gonna like pick on pick, those things well <laughs> a lot of people there's well, yeah i mean most people are okay there's a saying that's called hike your own hike uh-huh. like that's pretty pervasive is do it your own way right. and th- that's part of the you know the goodness of the trail of, of you know People are usually very positive in the trail, but right. you know you do have gatekeepers out there. And you're, I'm you're sure. Doing it wrong. The, yes, yes. Yeah. The, everyone has an opinion. Yeah. But the interesting part to me just now, as as I'm listening to you, is like that 12 mile walk took you all day, maybe, and it took Helen probably 12 minutes to get there <laughs> to right. pick you up. And I'm like, sometimes I was walking the whole day, and it took her 15 minutes to go pick you up. But it's interesting. But, sometimes it will be on the other side of a, a mountain, uh, and, and, right? So and it's the, not, there's only two roads, and you know it may be. An so hour it's not like as the crow flies. It's like yeah, they take exactly. that road around or something. Wow. Did you ever come across any bad weather where you had to reroute yourself? Uh, no, I, I think this year it was probably, we really had good weather this year. I think mm-hmm. this class of 2019 was, was very lucky, um, for the weather, but that mm-hmm. happens. They have reroutes and some of these mountain ridges, they have bad weather, um, yeah, on the that. trail, uh, these blazes, these rectangular squares that are painted on trees and different things that show you the way to go. Um, we also carry a, a phone app, a lot of very popular gut hook app that uses mm-hmm. gps we put our our phones in airplane mode okay. and we're able to follow it and, it and it has all kinds of things about where the next water source is or oh. um, the shelter is or how right. long um, 
And then people can go and give comments and they can say, well, oh, this water source is still running or it's dry, which became a mm -hmm. problem later in the summer. Um, so Where they would dry up the water source. Yeah, so. Yeah, I noticed some places where we just like go and just chill out in the creek or something. Yeah, just, a lot of resting in the creek and soaking your feet. I mean, uh, you know, talk about that. You're going to get injured. I, I was injured multiple times. Everybody gets hurt. Yeah. Um, uh, Slipping, you mean? Oh, you're like going to fall. Like most people fall 30, 50 times. Like you, you oh. fall. Um, it's it's slippery out there. And you most of the time you don't get hurt. You fall on your butt, you fall on your back. But right. sometimes you get hurt. I mean, uh, hmm. various people, a couple people um, airlifted out. I mean, uh, I know it, up in Maine, I was with a group in a shelter. They were headed southbound. I was headed northbound. I heard from a girl behind me that, you know, the girl I was – there in the shelter with, they had gotten up early to go down what's called Mahusik Arm, a very mm -hmm. treacherous descent, and uh, she broke her leg. They had to um, stabilize her, get her airlifted out. Wow. I was up in the Bigelow Mountains in Maine and came across a lady, and she was sitting there. Her husband was like, yeah, I called the ranger. And I heard later a helicopter came in and had to airlift her out. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's always... You know, I guess also that's why some of the state parks and stuff, they're like, they want you to camp in certain places because otherwise it almost becomes a burden on them oh, yeah. in, in the system right. to, I mean, it's not cheap to go airlift someone out sure. of a park or something. And I don't know what it cost them. I know I, I ran into a girl and she said she joined a mountaineering club with, because it provided rescue insurance like at mm. you know, no cost or cheap cost. So um, I didn't even think about that. So yeah, you could some, do something like that. Even, of, yeah. Like AAA on the way. <laughs> Right. Except you might have to wait a couple of hours before they show up or yeah. something. Maybe. Um, you know, do you, do you, you know, ha I'm, I know probably a lot of people already know a bit about, you know, that you've done this. Have you heard anyone say that, you know, Dave, you've inspired me. I want to do this too. What do you think? I, should, I think should we know? all have stories. You know, each of us on the trail back and around down, like, you know, Joe did the story on me in the Peachy Corners Life paper. And, you know, my son got excited and he who came up, met me in Maine, and started doing more backpacking. I think we all have stories, and, and we started like that. So mm. yeah, that's why I'm doing this podcast and um, it, it, why I do stories like that, because I learn from other people, um, and I was inspired by other people. So, right. yeah. Anything you want to um, – we've been speaking to David Nixon. Uh, David's a neighbor of mine who decided to do the Appalachian Trail, twenty-two, almost 2,200 miles. Yeah. Uh, worth of trip, uh, flip flopping a little bit, starting in Virginia up to Maine, and then coming back from Virginia. Right. And so I started Georgia, April third right? out of Damascus. Yeah. I summited Mount Katahdin in Maine August eighteenth. August eighteenth. I uh, ended up flying back to Atlanta, spending a day, and uh, Helen and my younger son drove me up to Damascus about a week later, August twenty fifth, and I walked. And then you walked all the way back. The four hundred seventy miles. And where'd you end actually? Springer Mountain, Georgia, so near Amicalola. Okay. Falls is the, is the start, the southern terminus, yeah. And then they picked you up from there, I guess. Um, right, or they came up and met me there. We spent a night at the, the lodge. So, uh, sure. yeah, September 26th was when I finished. So, And if you were to give, uh, I know this is not something you would normally do, but any advice to anyone? I mean, it's this? it's all out there. I mean, immerse yourself. Just do the research. There's so many um, neat uh, YouTube bloggers, like I said, um, Dixie. I loved Evan's backpacking videos. Uh, there's a tough guy, Early Riser. Um, uh, there's a, a group of ladies, really lovable ladies, that did it this year, the Wander Women, who huh. are a lot of fun to watch. There was a, there's a guy from Auburn, Alabama that I hiked a lot with, uh, Papa John, PJ on the AT, that really did a good job of vlogging every day, you know, what, what they went through, saw the terrain of the trail. So if you watch those kind of things, there's... There's, there's a whole world out there of, of research. Um, but I think the main thing to be successful is to realize that it it's going to be a mental and physical challenge. That it, if you're going out there to see beauty, you'll see a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. you will see maybe more than a little bit. To just walk, no. I mean, you're up and down. You're on slippery rocks and roots. And, and you have to, in what they call, I think it's a military, it comes from the military, but embrace the suck. Like you, you yeah. have to want the adversity and right. and know that going in. Right. 
and then I guess that saying of being one with nature, you really are. I mean, you're. I mean, you're I mean, like as so good as you tight. can these days. I yeah. mean, it, it's still not really out there. You're not out in you know some place in Montana where there's nobody around. I mean, it. No. But it, it's good about that too because you, yeah. there's going to be people around. You're safe. You're never that far from a road crossing where you can get medical right. help or. And people that want to do sections obviously can oh, do yeah. sections and. Right. I never thought about that, and or at least small sections, hundred miles, and yeah, points and stuff. Definitely, I yeah. mean, right. so um, you know, thank you. I oh, appreciate yeah. you coming on and sharing your story with us. So I'm going to have at livinginpeachtreecorners dot com a gallery of some pictures, a link back to Dave's blog site where you can go through and read through. On a weekly basis, I guess, or multiple posts, uh, or quite a few posts in there. Yeah, I think about uh, every week I, I talked about yeah. that and kind of, yeah. Just thousand thousand pictures, some really great pictures that maybe might not look, look beautiful to you at that moment, but to me look really great. Uh, it's such expansive land. Uh, and even, you know, listen, the magic on the road and stuff, people being out there, it just fills me with the fact, with the feeling that the that there is an America out there. Well, wow, that, that's that what cares, you hear all you the know? time. That, that it's the people. It it uh, whatever it um, reinvigorated my hope for humanity. Like yeah. it's it's the best of what humans are. We help each other, and um, yeah, just yeah. Yeah. the way it was a long time ago. Yeah, and you know the way it is today, maybe, and we just don't see it enough of it. Right. Maybe. Thanks, David. Yeah. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Peachtree Corner's Life with Rigo Figliolini. You can listen to our live stream on Spreaker every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. or on demand at iHeartRadio, Spotify, and iTunes. Don't forget to like our Facebook page for notification of our live video streams of the show. Catch our other podcast shows at peachtreecornerslife.com.